Wargaming has done it once again. They've released a new tank. Is it any good? Of course it's in crates, so it's not going to be worth it. But is it any good? And what else is in the shop? Should you buy something or should you wait for something good to appear, which might take months? Well, let's find out. Obviously, never ever buy your credits for gold. That is a absolutely terrible value. However, if you are looking for gold and also times five boosters, these can be pretty useful. They also include snippets for the season. So I guess not bad if you're looking for gold and also times fives. The tank section is still the same as it is the last couple of weeks, pretty much. It is disappointing. We start off with the crushers, which are the terrible ICU-130, which is basically the worst parts of the ICU-152, combined with a gun that's sort of fine, but it obviously doesn't make the tank any better, and the ICU-152 is a much better vehicle to have, like the squareness of the gun here as well. And this vehicle does have sort of premium AP rounds that have less penetration and do more damage. And then we have the FE-201. Great DPM, decent vehicle, cost way too much on its own, 4.5k, not cool. And in a bundle, it's a tier 7, it makes less credits, does less damage than a tier 8, not worth it. The Glorious Warriors, now first of all 10k for two mediocre vehicles each is a joke at best. And then 15k for these vehicles, just not worth it. At least the times fives are unlocked, that kind of ups the value a little bit. But then again, the Astron Rex is a terrible tier 8 medium tank and the tier 60 is basically the Chrysler K. If it would only be the things that are bad about the Chrysler K. It is entirely pointless, and if it were in the shop for, let's say, 6-7k gold, then we can talk about it being a, a niche vehicle that some people might enjoy, but for this price, the only thing you can do is laugh at it. However, what is still here is the Victorious Onslaught that I can still recommend if you haven't gotten it yet of the Lerve, which is great for grinding credits. It's somewhat of a mediocre vehicle, but it is excellent for grinding credits because it has one of the highest credit coefficients in the game. So it's great for that. Needs a little bit of skill to play. So again, this is a intermediate to advanced bundler right here. Same with the Centurion 5-1. It is a great vehicle, only 190 alpha damage though, so it does require a decent to very good player to really get the maximum out of this. If you're a beginner, I can't recommend this. However, if you're sort of got your 3k battles, you've got your 50% win rate, you can start thinking about something like this. It is a good bundle to make creds and also to have some fun as well. And these times fives are unlocked. And that is more than enough for an entire tech tree right here, if you do it properly. So... It is still a good bundle, 10k, so obviously a much better value as well as the Glorious Warriors up here. So I can recommend this if you buy anything, it probably would be that. Don't forget to open your free containers because, I mean, they're free. And then what do we have down here? We have the sh 100 down here. That is shit. You need 30 charms to get this vehicle. 15k gold, which means you have to pay 45,000 gold for a vehicle that's worth, at best, 5. I don't know. I wouldn't do that. If you play the game regularly, then the Battle Pass is a great way to get a lot of extra stuff right as you play. But obviously, if you don't max out the Battle Pass, it's not worth buying the premium one. However, if you do easily max out all the way to level 60, then I can highly recommend picking up the Battle Passes. The value has gone down slightly over the, the times this Battle Pass has existed, but overall, with the vaults and all of that, it is still a decent pickup, especially if you can get all the way to level 60. And if you buy one thing, and just one thing, this is probably the best value that you can get in the shop if you play regularly and if you do play for the rewards. Then there is the new Season 3. We have a Tier 7 Silencer, which is sort of a charioteer copy. Then we got the Tier 8 Swindler, which is a AMX 1390. And the Fenric, which is a Emil with a 2-shot instead of a 3-shot. The Tier 9 obviously cannot be acquired without paying, and uh, it's not worth paying. Let me just tell you that right now. The Tier 8... It's a Namex 1390. And the tier 7, it's just a charioteer basically with a significantly worse gun. <laughs> 
World of Tanks PC sells its most new premium tanks directly to the shop for 30 to 50 euros in the starter bundle. There are obviously exceptions like the vehicles that appear in the Christmas boxes, but those are rare exceptions. But in World of Tanks Blitz, Wargaming does not care about you. They only care about selling crap vehicles like this one to consumers that don't know what they're actually buying. Because while this vehicle is not what I would call useless for its price, it is an insult to sell something like this. It is nothing short of an insult to sell a vehicle that is as mediocre and pointless as this for 45,000 gold. That is the charm price. That is what Wargaming is selling it for. That is the real price. Basically, what we have here is we have not a lot of armor. We have not a lot of alpha damage and not a lot of mobility. And while this vehicle can be played well and isn't out of the world terrible, because, I mean, most of the vehicles are between somewhere 5 to 10% in terms of how good they are, this vehicle is especially terrible for new players because of the combination of low alpha damage, low mobility, and no armor whatsoever. You have to peak this vehicle a lot, and you have no protection whatsoever. So, to a new player, this is poison. To an advanced player, well, why would you waste your time with this vehicle when you can play something that is better all around at either being a medium tank or being a tank destroyer? Because this is a tank destroyer, it plays like a terrible slow medium tank. So, not really anything great. And remember, we're not inserting this vehicle into a vacuum. There are vehicles out there that are sold for a good price and that are good vehicles. This is not one of them. This is one of the vehicles like the ISU-130 that you throw into the shop hoping that three people buy it and then you go home happy because three people bought it. This is that kind of vehicle that doesn't really have a point in anyone's garage, doesn't have any value in owning. It's simply just there because if you want to collect tanks, you might as well collect it. That is the kind of vehicle this is. And to sell that in crates for such a absolutely insanely high price is nothing but a insult to the World Tank Splits community. And that will continue until the end of time. And obviously I will continue to call that out because that's what this is. It is a insult to the World Tank Splits community to sell this vehicle at a price like that. Now, unfortunately, some people will always gamble. Some people will always try to get it, even though it is nowhere near worth what it is sold for. And then Wargaming will laugh and make a good money. So, in the end, again, as with every single new release vehicle, it is a absolute worthless disappointment in its current state. If it eventually gets chucked into the shop for, I don't know, 6, 7k gold, then well, it will receive the same review as the ISU-130 received. It's there, it's not too terrible, but it's entirely pointless. But it can be played well. But don't let this fool you. It doesn't make it good.